Good morning everyone. Uh, there was a little bit of interest on uh, making a tutorial. So today I'm going to run through the uh, thought process and uh, tools used, materials used to uh, try to replicate one of these vending carts found in Critter Country. So the most important thing is to uh, get some reference. I got lucky here with this shot uh, because I got a side view and a uh, front view of the carts used so it gives me a uh, size comparison which is good and basically since you can't really bring tools in to uh, take measurements and whatnot I'm going to use the uh, cast member as a reference for uh, the size of this vending cart now my goal is not to replicate this you know perfectly I just want it to be able to read nicely on the uh, Splash Mountain model I've cut this piece of cardboard here, basically the height of the uh, person, and if I take that and turn it on its side, we can see that the uh, height of this person is about the length of the cart, and I'll show you how that comes into uh, play in a second or two. I could also use the uh, hand railing, height, the umbrella size to give me a uh, rough indication of what size these uh, things need to uh, be. Alright, so uh, here's basically the materials I'm going to be using. 90% uh, of it's going to be wood, basswood actually. Uh, I get this wood from Northeastern Scale Lumber Company. But uh, something like this you may want to use plastic, but I don't have a lot of plastic laying around so I like using wood. So in the uh, bottom left corner we'll see a uh, casting of an umbrella. Uh, I'm going to use that figure in the, the frame next to the penny as a reference for basically figuring out the size of all the parts that I need. Uh, I got some metal rod. One will be used for the uh, umbrella support and the other will be used for the uh, pulling mechanism when the uh, vending machine needs to be moved around. Above that with the point on it I have a dowel that I'll be using for the, uh, the wheels of the cart. Then I have the various sizes of lumber that I will be using. I kind of already figured this out so we don't waste time on the video with that. Uh, one thing about using dowels or buying dowels is go in the store, you see a dowel, it looks round, you get it home, it's not that round. Always take the time to make sure you get the, a round dowel when you buy one. So here's the tools that I'll be using for the uh, project today. In the uh, top left I have a little miter box. Uh, I like using emery board and Super glue is a must because uh, these parts are pretty small and you know it takes forever if you use regular wood glue. Got a little drill there for the uh, metal pieces. The uh, razor saw on the right for cutting the parts and most importantly tweezers because these parts are very small. One of the things I like to do ahead of time is decide how many of these pieces I'm going to need because it's easier to cut them all at once versus going back trying to measure a part and then cutting them again so I think for this project I'm gonna make uh, two carts alright guys so basically here are all the parts for the uh, little vending cart and uh, I've glued some of the sub assemblies together already I don't have a tripod so this might be a little tricky but basically the refrigerator is going to be glued to the the top of the unit first and you can see we got a couple little handles here one two now in the picture it looks like there's several more but you know you gotta draw the line somewhere so you probably see that I've drilled this hole already to accept the umbrella and I would definitely glue the uh, umbrella to the post first that way later on you can just slide it in and definitely paint all this before you glue that but uh, the next important piece to drill is the front uh, I don't know what you call it the truck that carries the wheels to accept the uh, handle later on you can see we got the four wheels so I would basically glue this assembly first then these two to the bottom of this and then put the wheels on last so a couple other things I wanted to point out is, you know, at the beginning we talked about using the scale of the figure for the uh, the length of the cart. So you can see I roughed that in, but you may notice that this piece is a little bit bigger than that. 
Uh, the reason why I did that was so the two different planes would read better uh, once it was painted. You know, basically this piece is the same size as that, but I figured for the the model's sake, it would be more interesting to have this a little bigger than that. I mean, it's a little bigger in the photo, but this is a little bit exaggerated. So based on this, we can obviously determine the depth going that way. And that's basically how all the uh, proportions were arrived at. They're not perfect, but I think they're fine. So over here, this is a painted uh, finished version of what we're trying to make here. So see the paint job is pretty simple. Uh, the order of painting that I would do on this is I'd start with the uh, dark gray in the back. This is once everything's basically assembled. And then work your way forward. So like this rectangle wasn't painted second. The whole body was painted this color and then I added the, uh, the uh, outside color after. Makes it a lot easier. Um, back to this. Once you get everything assembled you may not like the fact of the end grain, the stuff on the end there looks kind of rough so you can sand it and then what you could do if you want to is get a sealer something like this and seal all the wood the paint will adhere better and uh, depending on how many coats or how thick it is it'll actually get rid of some of the grain so if the grain bothers you that's a that's another option so basically that's the the finished job I hope you guys liked the video if anybody's crazy enough to build one of these, I'd love to see what you uh, come up with. So, thanks for watching and uh, happy Thanksgiving.